Happy holidays, everyone. Hey, before today's show gets started, I wanted to make sure that you knew our 2019 gift guide was recently published. Visit theproducemoms.com slash gift for dozens of gift ideas, all featuring some of our favorite produce department items. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from everyone at The Produce Moms. Enjoy today's show. Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. Today on the Produce Moms podcast, it's me and Kristen. And we are talking about, well, Kristen, I don't really know what we're talking about. I'm assuming uh, maybe the holidays, looking ahead to 2020, podcast recap. What's going on today? Yeah, we're doing a lot of reflection of 2019. We're talking about the future. And then we've got some quick fire questions where we're going to just ask you and you have like three seconds to respond. Sounds like a lot of pressure. Okay, so who's kicking this thing off? Me, of course. Okay, go. All right. When you look back over 2019, we always talk about reflection and growth. What is your biggest takeaway, both individually and for the produce moms, for 2019? I feel like all I've done is reflect on 2019. Um, I shouldn't have grown before I said that, but all right. So for me personally, it's really easy. I lost like 10 pounds, which sounds um, like not that big of a deal, but tell me, I'll tell you what, if you've ever like been a woman, been a mom, been a busy human being, losing 10 pounds is a big deal. Okay. So that is definitely by far like the 2019 accomplishment in my personal life that meant so much. Also, because I had such an emotional 2018 with my dad's sudden death, um, being able to kind of bounce back and dedicate some more time to myself and my personal healing and my personal wellness was a really big deal in so many ways, like good for my physical health as well as my mental health. So that hands down, that's the easy part of this question for me to answer. Um, in terms of the business, I feel like it's just been so much growth. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would say that because it's been so much growth, um, it's hard to kind of pinpoint, but, um, looking back, I mean, certainly the work that we've done with Kroger health sticks out, you know, supporting Kroger health and what they're doing, whether it really, as it relates to opt up as well as the food as medicine corporate initiative. Um, and of course now with their new brand and consumer strategy of fresh for everyone. So I think it's a really exciting time for the work that the produce moms is doing with Kroger. Um, We've also certainly enjoyed um, a great amount of growth as it relates to the amount of uh, produce department brands that we're working with. We've added a lot of new brand partners this year, including some unique ones that don't necessarily represent um, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, working with sticky lickets has been a lot of fun doing more with media. We had some real breakthrough media opportunities, um, you know, where we're getting into bigger, bigger markets and we're just on the heels of national television, which is super exciting. Um, and then we've got, um, you know, we, we at Fresh Summit this year, we had probably the most amazing Fresh Summit we've ever had, Kristen, which for those of you listening, that's it's kind of like the Super Bowl of the fresh produce industry. Like everyone comes to it, every single brand, every service provider to the fresh fruit and vegetable industry. And um, it's an enormous trade show where most folks are showcasing like their new product line. So at the Crunch Pack booth this year, they one of the products that they were showcasing, and we were able to do kind of a, a little quick ceremony on the uh, expo floor hall where I was able to talk with Tony Freitag and other members of the Crunch Pack team and 
gosh, what a moment to see the Produce Moms logo on the bag of a product that I buy all the time that is part of so many families' lives. Um, The Crunch Pack Apple Slices are just a perfect fit for the Produce Moms audience and relevancy. And I just could not be more honored to be able to say, wow, now we, we we have a consumer product. That's amazing. Yeah, it's definitely so exciting and so many great things to come in 2020 with that and, and many other things that, you know, uh, we'll we'll talk about at a later time, really. <laughs> so um, going on, we're going to talk about the podcast. So the podcast, we started, um, you know, about a year and a half ago. And I will say, like, it's really taken off this year. We've had so many great guests, so many memorable topics that you've covered and people you've talked to. So. For you, what has been, you know, one of your most memorable moments of 2019 on the podcast? So the podcast has been phenomenal. I mean, for us to have this platform, first of all, where so many, because we read about these stories in agriculture on a daily basis in the trade journals, you and I are very familiar with them as are, you know, most of the folks within the industry. But um, I... I love this platform so much because it is really a unique offering for the remarkable men and women of specialty crop agriculture um, and really any industry or individual that's touched in a unique way by fruits and vegetables. So for me, gosh, there's been so many podcast episodes that stick out. Um, I I really think the one that um, where I'm like, wow, I learned... A, a ton. Um, Speaking with the founder and CEO of Hazel Technologies was a real shining moment for me. Anytime you can speak with a founder, you, you know, that founder passion is just contagious. So I would highly recommend that anyone who hasn't listened to that one, listen to it, especially because they've got some products for the the home kitchen in their forecast for 2020. And the, the, the purpose of Hazel Technologies is just so important. Um, it's a, you know, and it's, it's all natural and it's just using atmospheric chemistry to, um, you know, to help reduce food waste, which is such a critical issue for the global food supply chain. And especially everyone in agriculture, we're, we're passionate about that. Another one that really stood out where I'm like, wow, I learned a lot was um, Our Planet Earth, where we discussed the process of recycling plastic. Um, there's no mystery that plastic packaging is a concern for everyone. And I think that the fresh fruit and vegetable industry is leading the way in terms of um, packaging innovation. And we're in a, you know, I I mentioned food waste was the other thing. So plastic does help our industry mitigate food waste. And so it's, you know, it is a, it's a packaging medium that keeps our food safe, that keeps it fresh. So the Our Planet Earth was remarkable for me because it really helped educate me on plastic waste is the problem more than plastic is the problem. And what they've done in the state of California to do to have that true closed loop and perpetual recycling system is amazing. And it's my hope that, um, you know, there's more, more facilities, you know, our planet Earth expands and there's more folks like them that are, that are helping to reduce plastic waste in the United States and globally. Um, and then another one that was really fun for me was actually the um, Coconut Coalition. I read about that in um, one of the trade journals. I think it was Fresh Plaza. And I was like, this is insane that we have a fruit that is as common as coconut and it has been misclassified by the FDA as a tree nut. Um, so, you know, in other words, if, if when they named the fruit coconut, if they would have simply named it like cocoa fruit, um, it more than likely would not have been misclassified. And that's a, that's a huge problem on so many different levels. Um, we want consumers to have complete confidence and clarity in their food labels. And that this is a scenario where a product is mislabeled. Um, you know, not it's, it's labeled as an allergen when it's not an allergen. Um, I know that probably most of us, when we think of mislabeled products, we're thinking, oh, wow, they omitted the allergen from the food label. And in this scenario, they classified something as a food allergen when it's not. 
And the trickle down effect for that is real. I mean, you got to think it, that affects all the way down to the growing region because anyone that's in the business of manufacturing food, especially in you know, in this day and age, you know, looking forward to 2020, I think we're going to continue to see more clean label, less, you know, like minimally processed foods that are dominating the the growing category of, you know, natural foods and, and how do we have healthier for you snacking choices. And, and so coconut is, it's a critical ingredient for folks that are in the natural food space. And yet the growers and the coconut industry at large are really threatened um, because people that are, people that are preparing, um, you know, processed foods or minimally processed foods or, you know, even raw foods, no one, people don't want to have to declare allergens on their food labels, especially if they're choosing something that's not, one of the top nine allergens. So that to me, like, and we have to have political action to turn it around because the FDA made a mistake here on coconuts and classified them as a tree nut. Coconuts are a droop, which is a type of fruit. It's the same uh, classification that I believe, I believe I learned in the podcast that it's the same classification of fruit as like a plum. Um, It's not to say that there aren't individuals who could in fact be allergic to coconuts. Certainly like that exists with any item that you put in or on your body, but um, it is not one of the, one of the primary top nine. It does not classify as a tree nut. And that is such an important episode. So I would say those three off the cuff, but, um, you know, gosh, I'm, I'm an artist, you know, it's kind of like, you, it's kind of like being in the mother or the artist or the farmer. Like I love all of my podcasts the same way all of the farmers love all of their crops. The mom loves all of her children and the artist loves all of their paintings, you know? So I love all of them and I could not be uh, more grateful for the amazing guests that we have featured. Um, all of those of you who have taken the time to write a review or give us a rating. I mean, I think we have, I mean, we're very close to a perfect five-star rating. We have over 30 amazing reviews. Um, and when I read those, it just warms my heart and helps motivate me to continue to stay dedicated to this platform because doing a new episode each and every week, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous investment of both our resources and our time. But um, when we get that kind of feedback from our audience, we know it's worth it. And we're really excited about continuing the podcast and growing it in 2020. Awesome. So moving forward, we're going to kind of talk about produce trends. What were some of the 2019 top produce trends and do you think they're going to stay? Mm. Well, I think fruits and vegetables have never been, you know, more, more, hot, trendy, sexy, you know, fruits and vegetables, uh, they're definitely here to stay. I mean, we're living in this plant-based society. Like that's one of the top buzzwords right now as it relates to the food industry. And guess what? Fruits and vegetables are the OG of plant-based. So it's a, it's a wonderful time to be in the business of fresh produce. And in terms of trends, you know, there were, I'm, I'm going to reference uh, Fresh Summit again. One of the couple items that really stuck out to me, I think you're going to continue to see a rise in dates. Medjool dates have, um, you know, kind of emerged as this healthy yet very satisfying, sweet, natural, it's like nature's candy. So if you've never tried a Medjool date, you got to do it. Like 2020 is your year. Actually, don't even wait until 2020. Like go do it today. Yeah. But um, I think you're going to continue to see those type of produce items that can satisfy cravings. I mean, we crave for our food to be delicious, right? That like rule number one, as it relates to food is we want it to taste good. Um, and in cravings, like that's just part of human nature. So there's a couple item, there's a couple things that are happening in agriculture right now where like the plant breeding is actually focused on flavor first in a way that it really never has been before. Um, obviously, you know, December brought us the cosmic crisp apple. That's an amazing eating experience for so many, you know, apple lovers and consumers out there. Uh, one thing I love about that apple is you can slice it up and it's so naturally slow to oxidize. Like, put it on your charcuterie board this holiday season and you're going to love that. Like, I mean, you can have that charcuterie board out for six 
even eight hours, like the apple's going to dehydrate before it starts turning brown, which is amazing. And it's totally natural. Like it's 100% classically bred. Um, Same type of thing happening in the melon category this summer, 2020 in the summertime months, you're going to start seeing some new, some new melons that I hope become extremely popular. You've got the flavor kiss melon, the crave cantaloupe. Um, These are, I, I mean, I was born, raised, and currently live in Indiana. Like cantaloupe's a big deal here. And I'm telling you right now, this Crave cantaloupe is delicious. You're going to love it. So I think you're going to see a rise in maybe not necessarily like new or niche categories or varieties. I think you're actually, or commodities, I should say, I think you're just going to see some of our favorites just becoming more and more flavorful. And that precision and agriculture is, is multifaceted. You know, I mean, the, the growers are thanks to technology on the farm, um, you know, growers are becoming smarter and smarter each and every day and their quest to raise the most flavorful food for us all. So um, I I would say that one item kind of stuck out where I, I could you know, see is was the question was about predictions, right? Yeah. Okay, so I could see, I could see um, jicama actually coming on big in 2020. I mean, the, you're seeing things like shredded jicama on the market being available. Um, you know, jicama sticks have been available in that vatted, value-added category in the produce department for some time now. Um, but the jicama tortillas and some of these other really unique ways that you're seeing, you know, that vegetable being used is tremendous. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to also go on record where I think you're going to see the celery juice craze continue because, uh, you know, especially as we get into new year's resolutions, um, I I mean, it tastes great. My goodness, especially if you're using that dandy celery that we all love, it's like the sweetest celery on the planet. Um, and you don't need to add anything to your 100% dandy celery juice. But um, I did see at Fresh Summit some juices and I've actually started to see them pop up in that juice section in the produce department where it is like, you know, you got your 100% orange juice and then right next to it, you got 100% celery juice. And how cool is that? I think that's amazing. Wonderful. All right. So in this last part, we're just going to do a little quick fire, kind of your favorites of 2019. Um, you don't have a lot of time to respond. So it's going to be the first things that come off the top of your mind. You ready? I guess this sounds dangerous. I know, okay. Right? All right. Your favorite new recipe from the Produce Moms website. Oh, 100% fresh ingredient, green bean casserole. Thank you to our brand partners at Eat Smart for working with us to develop that. I mean, I could eat the whole daggone tray. <laughs> we know what Lori's serving at her Christmas dinner. So, okay, your favorite lifestyle segment that we did in 2019. Oh, man. Uh, Thanksgiving 2019 with the sweet potatoes was fantastic. It was a great segment. Um, But really, I would say that probably my very favorite segment of them all was Good Morning Arizona, where we really, for the first time, showcased the sticky lickets. And we brought, they, I was joined in the studio with some kids. And that was a lot of fun. fun. Yeah. Um, All right. What was your go-to fruit for the kids this year? Well, I mean, the struggle's real, right? Um, Strawberries, it's, you know, I know that that's a a pretty common favorite among a lot of us, but um, for my boys, you know, they, it was always, Joe was always grapes and Mac was always watermelon. So for me to get that, turn them into big strawberry fans has, you know, been like a huge accomplishment. (laughs) So, (laughs) and thanks to Nature Ripe for your role in that. (laughs) All right. What about your go-to veggie for family dinners? Oh, broccoli. All day long broccoli. It's the number one thing that we serve at dinner here at the Taylor home. And, uh, you know, I keep it, I, I, I try to keep it on hand fresh always, but it is something where I buy, that is one item that I always have a bag of frozen broccoli florets in the freezer, like multiple bags, because steaming them up real quick and you know you can add some special seasoning or a little cheese but really my kids prefer it raw so that's fine with me too absolutely so I know this year we did a lot with charcuterie boards I mean I can think of several different things whether they were blogs Facebook lives we did it on some of our lifestyle segment what is your favorite thing to put on a charcuterie board mm. 
probably dates. Um, but also let's see, you got to have something you, the color is so important. Watermelon radish is probably my ultimate favorite thing to put on a charcuterie board. And if you can't find a watermelon radish, then a good old standard radish will do, do the trick. But the color of the watermelon radish with the red and the green, it's just beautiful. And, uh, I would, I would say that's probably my favorite thing to add, but, um, you gotta, you gotta mix it up and the, a charcuterie board's a great opportunity to have some fresh fruit. Um, definitely always include your fruit, fresh fruit and vegetables when you're building it. Some of my favorites, I said the watermelon radish definitely wins the quick fire response, but, um, celery sticks are great. Uh, you know, they're kind of like a natural vehicle for cheese. Um, but we also do a lot of uh, sugar snap peas on the charcuterie boards I build here at home. Uh, berries are wonderful for your fresh fruit options, fresh grapes, uh, do a little board with, uh, with a little serving spoon of some pomegranate arrows. It's really pretty. The bright, the bright red also, um, apple slices, pear slices, um, citrus. Like, I mean, I, I kind of feel like I'm Forrest Gump here right now, <laughs> listing off every fruit and vegetable in the produce department. Another trick for anyone building a charcuterie board, you should always have some dried fruit as well on there. So some dried fruit favorites that I always tend to, um, showcase dried cherries. Um, I do a lot of dried apricots, um, I do dried figs and usually for the figs, I cross, I cut them in half or cross section them because a lot of people like they, they know a fig, but they don't know the dried fig when it's whole. Um, and also like some people just want that little bite. They don't want the whole thing. So I, yeah, there, so you can't go wrong. Everything, everything, everything <laughs> yeah, just everything is up for grabs. Everything in the produce <laughs> department goes on a charcuterie board. <laughs> There's your quick answer, folks. All right. What about the prep hack that you want everyone to know? Oh, the best prep hack I've got is with the garlic cloves. Throw your, throw your head of garlic into a mason jar, seal it up, and shake it. Um, it will fall apart, and the, the skins of the garlic, I hope I'm not pronouncing this wrong. I believe it's chaff. I think it's chaff. It might be chafe. It's chaff. I don't know. Somewhere Ken Christopher's cringing. All right. It's, uh, but the skins of the garlic, you put the garlic head in a mason jar, seal it, and then you shake it really hard. Two things happen. You get a great arm workout. And second of all, the, the garlic cloves are like perfectly peeled. Awesome. Whole, yeah, and you're left with just perfectly peeled whole clove garlic. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> California garlic. Buy, you got to buy Christopher Ranch California garlic. <laughs> All right. The storage tip you want everyone to know. Tomatoes are not <laughs> to be refrigerated. Period. Ever. Do not put your tomatoes in the refrigerator. They go on the countertop or in the pantry. Room temperature. You refrigerate them, you ruin them. <laughs> not really sure how she feels about that. All right. The I mean, let's just go on record too. If I'm at a restaurant and I can tell that my tomatoes have been refrigerated, I, I tell them, I ask the server, I'm like, where do you store your tomatoes? And if they say in the refrigerator, I let them know that I can tell. And I don't, I, I have a hard time eating them. It ruins the flavor. Don't do it, folks. And I'm a testament to that. I have been at a restaurant with Lori when she has sent back the tomatoes <laughs> because they've been refrigerated. <laughs> All right. So what about the fresh herb that makes everything better? Man, this one's hard. Um, I'm going to say basil. I love it on savory and sweet. Basil wins. I love it. It's a good answer. Yeah. All right. Fruit baskets as a gift. Yes or no? Depends on what's in it. Can I make a third answer? Okay. Sure, of course. All right. You can. No, okay. Quick answer. Yes. Fruit baskets. It's a yes. However, um, let's get some high quality varieties of apples in there. Um, let's make sure that you know for accompaniments, like don't forget the bottle of wine. Um, and I think that my biggest beef with fruit baskets is sometimes they put less less desirable varieties specifically i'm i'm looking at the red delicious apple like there are so many amazing apples out there um and it's it just 
try, try those. I mean, yes, apples are always a good choice, but gosh, there's so many good varieties that sometimes are overlooked when they put together the, the gift baskets. Yeah. So if you're putting together your own, um, definitely make sure that you get a little bit, you know, try those new varietals, put in a cosmic crisp, try a pink lady, you know, get something that's, that's unique and different to the produce department. We, um, we just showcased the sweet tango apples this year. Those are so good. So there's so many, so many options out there in terms of delicious fruit varieties and, and citrus too. You're going to see citrus, the citrus specialty category grow in a big way, whether it's with red flesh fruits or, um, you know, like specialty things like finger limes. You're going to, I think you're going to see a rise of citrus in a way you never have in 2020. So get some unique varieties of citrus in your, in your gift baskets too. This is a great time of year. A lot of the citrus at this time of year is coming from right here in USA. And so support your American citrus growers. All right. So along that same line, what about fruitcakes? No, (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I want a chocolate cake, not a fruit cake. (laughs) Unless of course it's carrot cake, but carrots, not a fruit. It's a vegetable. So, um, no, I'm a no, I'm a no go on that. We do have a recipe on the produce moms.com for fruit cake, which is a lot better than, you know, other fruit cakes that are out there, but I'm, I'm just not a huge fan. All right. All right. Last one. What's the new fruit or veggie that somebody should try in 2020? Mm. Well, pomegranates. Because I knew I had to have a quick answer. That's the one I want. We have had so many people reach out to us about how to open the, oh, the pomegranates. And so many people that have only experienced the flavor of pomegranate through things like pomegranate juice. Um, and, you know, the pomegranate arrows, which are the little seeds that are the edible part, those are widely available now in the, in the, you know, snacking section of your produce department. We also call that the value added section. Um, and they're really not hard to open up and you get so much fruit out of one, you know, so many arrows and one pomegranate. Um, and they're just so, so good for you. Like the antioxidants, the anti-inflammatory properties, they taste delicious. They, they definitely, for me, like they satisfy my, my sweet cravings. So there's so many reasons why I want you to try pomegranates. And let's be honest, they are absolutely a gorgeous fruit. Like they're, you know, a, a bowl of fresh pomegranates makes the best centerpiece. And, um, I just, I absolutely, I love that fruit and I want more people to try it. Awesome. Great answers. All right. So we are coming to a close. So, I'm going to throw it back to you for your last word. Oh I know. I hate that you do this to me. Uh, do the guests hate when I do this to them during the show? I always feel like it's a good thing, but then when it's shifted, when it's thrown back on me, I'm like, I don't want to do this. Um, no, I will do it though, because you know what, as you reflect on anything, um, for me, reflection almost always leads to gratitude. And I just could not be more thankful for, the folks that tune in to this podcast, the people that visit our website, subscribe to our newsletter, have written us a review, who work with us as brand partners, who, you know, say hello to me when they see me at a trade event, like all of those things just make me so grateful. But, um, you know, I, I think, I feel like I do a lot of time on record thanking the people who follow along and serve as part of our audience or part of our brand partner network. And really um, today, as I think back on 2019, I've got to thank my team. And, you know, this is not a one person show, obviously, you know, Kristen's here with me in the studio today, but there's others that uh, deserve a big thank you as it relates to the podcast. We have Bryant and his team, Uh, We have Alex who serves as our creative director. We have Helena who helps us with so many different, um, you know, needs in the office. Yeah. Yeah. We've got Mark and Christy who help us with thing, all things digital and uh, the amazing recipe photography. And we've got um, Annie who helps with, with the Instagram and we've got uh, Victoria who helps us with Pinterest And I am just so thankful for all of these people because it's not, I mean, the way that the Produce Moms platform has grown to what it is today, um, there's no one person who could do what we do. 
and it takes a lot of a lot of hands, a lot of passionate people, a lot of a lot of minds bringing bringing different talents and perspectives to the table. Um, and when you are when you're an entrepreneur like I am, and when you're bootstrapping, um, you got to surround yourself with people that uh, can handle that. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of unpredictable. Um, days when you're in our when you're in a position like what the produce moms is in, uh, you're dealing with a boss that has put everything behind. It's like you know the business is another child in so many ways. I mean it's there it's a passion project that uh, you know there is no playbook because you're kind of doing something new and unique. Um, and there's so many there's so many moments of pivoting redirection. Uh, failure, victories, and and so many days where all of those things happen at once, you know. And so you've got to have a you've got to you got to have the best team surrounding you. And I absolutely do. So that's my closing remarks. I want to say thank you to everyone that works with me. Uh, I'm so thankful to be your coworker. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a Produce Mom in you because there's a Produce Mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.